continue what's been a good start. Faced two contrasting styles in UAB and Davidson last weekend and winning the tournament in Asheville. First game for both teams since last Sunday. And off the opening tip. It'll head toward Boise State. So Jack Clark, <clears throat> excuse me, we'll get this the start today for the Tigers in place of Chauncey Wiggins, a little bit more size at the three spot. Only D1 opponent so far for the Broncos, San Francisco, team they knocked off last Sunday at home, 63 to 58. Did a nice job defensively against a high scoring Don's team. Backdoor pass. Max Rice, six year player from right there in Boise because his dad is the head coach. Talk more about that in a bit. On the intended pass down low, but it was wide of Roddy Anderson. Hall joined in the lineup by the aforementioned Jack Clark, as well as Joe Girard, Ian Shefflin, and Chase Hunter. Tiger team coming into this ball game, averaging 74 points a contest, giving up about 67. Shefflin from the outside. First points of the game for the junior from just outside of Atlanta. So much of the of Tiger offense has been their bigs, being able to stretch it out, shoot it from three. Clemson's making over 10 threes a game. Boise State is one of the best three-point field goal defensive teams in the country. Roddy Anderson and a second turnover that he's involved in here in the early going. Big shoes to fill at point guard for Boise State, and he picks up the first personal foul on either side. And we saw Boise State go to a backdoor action in the first possession, try to take advantage of Clemson's aggressiveness. But taking care of the basketball is a big part as we talked to Coach Rice before the game. Tigers haven't played all that many Mountain West Conference teams over the years. Gerard kicks it to Hunter. Chase Hunter feeling it from the outside. It'll go as a long two. The Tigers senior from Atlanta, second on the team at 11 points a contest. I've been very impressed about Joe Girard's assist. 3.5 assists per game so far this year. He's done a great job moving the basketball. Rice, one of their good outside shooters. Cam Martin, one of three transfers who will be vital to this team, giving it away to Rice. Try to get it back to Martin. Out of bounds it goes. Three possessions, three turnovers for a Broncos club that comes in, averaging 13 over the first two games. And it's been a little bit of an issue for the Broncos. Uh, we're going to see Jace Whitting get in here quickly, uh, see if they can calm the Broncos down a little bit. Clark looking low. Hall defended by Martin. 6-9 on 6-10. And P.J. Hall couldn't get the right roll. Boise State a year ago. With that second straight NCAA tourney trip, 51 wins in the past two seasons with a team based in Idaho's state capital. First bucket of the game, Cam Martin, seven and a half, playing his third game for Boise State. Hunter emphatically oh, wow. welcomes the Broncos south. Chase Hunter does a great job of pushing the basketball for the Tigers. That was off of a made basket, drove it all the way to the rim and got that dunk. Whiting, backup point guard into the game. Rice spins and forces. Good defense by Gerard. Boy, Chase Hunter, not only the strong move, but the elevation. And the Tigers want to attack the rim today. Boise State does a great job staying home with shooters on the perimeter to take away threes. Tigers want to play at the rim. Hunter had the size advantage. Martin able to save it. Whiting from a basketball family out of Burley, Idaho. Martin played it. Kansas among his college stops. Abo. Shibuzo Abo began his career at Texas Tech. Second year in their program. A guy who's really picked his game up scoring wise. They did a summer trip to Canada and he blossomed while they were on their journey. No for Gerard. Battle inside. Going to get an over the back foul against Boise State. And Abo is off to a great start this season. Watching him on film, he's got a great physical body. He can make threes. He's outstanding at the rim. His two-point field goal percentage is excellent. But he's a high-level defender. His size and his strength, he can guard anybody on the floor one through five. Four-star recruit out of San Diego, a guy they were in on when he was in high school, elected to go to the Big 12 with Texas Tech. But here he is now. A that is role will increase this season with Boise State. Dylan Hunter into the game for Clemson. Gerard. Now Hunter from the wing. He might follow the pathway of his older brother Chase, who 
slowly but surely in his Clemson career in years two and three got more of a role in his second season. That's a nice looking shot we didn't see last year. He sparked the Tigers in the second half against Davidson. He made the first three of the second half and really kind of got them going to get back in the game. Abo on the left wing. Tyson Dagenhart, guy we talked about in our open. Two years ago, 44% beyond the arc. Last year, had to play on the low block. They needed his 6'8 size down low. He's a very difficult matchup for Shefflin when he stretches the floor that far. Shefflin couldn't get it to go. Tigers ran out to a 5-0 advantage. Broncos a chance to tie or take the lead before the under-16 timeout. Yeah, the Broncos have settled down after those first three turnovers. Foul inside, going to go against Clark. And that'll be the first on the Tiger team. Got a break in the action early on in Little John Coliseum. A team from the West, a team from the Southeast. A two-point game. All right, I'll see. You're not just another policyholder to us. We remember your name. Hi, Cheryl. He remembered my name. Because it's your name. That's simple human sense. Ask your independent agent if auto owners make sense for you. When you order a Big Mac in the McDonald's app today, you'll earn points you can redeem for a free Big Mac in your future. Future, you says. Thanks. Earn free food with the app. Get the gift you want this holiday from Metro. Like a new iPhone 12 with 5G for $99.99 and no activation fees when you switch. You'll get a dual camera system to capture holiday memories and blazing fast 5G for downloading videos and games. Metro's got the lowest price in prepaid and not a yada yada, which means no contracts, no credit checks, and no surprises. Get holidays without the gotcha, only at Metro. Having triplets is amazing. Expensive. Okay, well that too. So we switched to bargain detergent, but we ended up using three times as much, and the clothes still weren't as clean as with Tide. So we're back to Tide. They're cuter than clean clothes. Mm-hmm, they are. Thanks, honey. You suck at folding. Oh, I know. <laughs> Do three times the laundry and get a Tide clean. It's got to be Tide. Two-point game early on. Clemson against Boise State out of the Mountain West Conference. Welcome back into Little John Coliseum with J.D. Powell. Pete Gannity, well, give me the 10,000-foot view of these first four minutes or so that you've seen on each end. So the Tigers want to play at the rim. You saw Chase Hunter off of a made field goal, drive the basketball, get to the rim and finish. And then Boise State, when they don't turn the basketball over, they're outstanding offensively. Turn it over the first three possessions, have settled down now, and they're doing very well. Interesting that both these teams' last game was last Sunday. And maybe a little bit of game rust, but obviously a lot of intensity in the practices. And keep in mind, visiting team coming from as far away as any opponent ever has to play a regular season game against the Tigers here in Little John. It's a really neat 10 days for Boise State. You and I visited with Coach Rice before the game. They came out here Thursday. They will leave and go here and play in the Orlando Invitational, uh, the ESPN event. They'll play Virginia Tech, so another ACC team. But these are great times in the preseason as a team. You know, you get 10 days together, you're going to go to an outstanding event in Orlando. Uh, it's a really special time for those guys. And again, I think you'd agree, anyone sitting in this arena watching the first few minutes of this game, if you know something about Boise State, some ACC caliber talent all across their roster. And in a league that had a team play for a national title a year ago, San Diego State, Broncos picked just behind them in the preseason Mountain West poll. Anderson, one of their newcomers, came to them from UC San Diego. Huge shoes he asked to fill, we noted earlier. Marcus Shaver Jr., really good point guard for them, who graduated after last year's NCAA run. Inside, Dagan hard no, and Shefflin pulls it down. Here come the Tigers. A big part of the game within the game is going to be which team can get the ball inside and draw some fouls against a big. We've seen the ball go inside a couple times. No fouls so far. 
Hemingway took it right at Dagan Hart. It'll stay in the Clemson end. How much do you think it's helped the Tigers game against Winthrop? They took control early on to open up, but UAB and Davidson from each end of the spectrum in terms of styles. How much does that help a team, J.D., early in the season when you're seeing a diversity of, of styles of play? I think it's huge, especially in the preseason like this. You're having to prepare for so many different things. Davidson is a very tough cover and Davidson and UAB could not be more different. And so a one day prep to guard Davidson is really challenging. Uh, so down the road, it will really pay off for the Tigers. Hemingway stepped out of bounds. Defense! 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 First turnover of the game for Clemson. Hall defending out high. It's another one of their newcomers, Omar Stanley, a St. John's transfer. Abo from the right corner this time. And the first lead for Boise State. A couple of long-range bombs for a guy who came in hitting just 20%. But mind you, they played a lower division school, Vanguard, which sounds more like an insurance or a security company <laughs> to open up. And then they played USF. Knocked away. Good defense inside. Anderson gets it back from Rice. Here come the Broncos. Anderson tried to scoop. Not happening against R.J. Godfrey. His fifth block so far. Leon Rice's teams have always been outstanding shooting teams. They haven't shot it great so far for the two, first two games this season. R.J. Godfrey has done a great job early in the season for the Tigers as a rim protector. Great job blocking that shot without fouling. Boise State in a league that's pretty physical, and there is a lot of talent in the Mountain West, as you've come to know. They had multiple NCAA tourney teams last year, so... I don't think they ever want to have the term mid-major associated with them. No, I was fortunate to, to be involved in a few games at some Mountain West schools, New Mexico in particular, one of the great home court atmospheres that I've ever been a part of. Unable to clean up inside, R.J. Keene, 6'7", senior, out of the Woodlands, Texas, been with their program for a number of years. And they're going to get Stanley for the reach-in foul on Hall. Two very similar offensive styles from Boise State and Clemson. Both teams are going to spread the floor. They're going to bring a big to the top of the key. Want to create some angles for driving, for back cuts, but also to drive the basketball from the top. Then we see P.J. Hall drive it to his left and draw a foul. Three team fouls on the Broncos. Boise State has played on an ACC floor before at NC State a few years back. Hall gets that one to go down. And the Tigers' top scorer is first bucket of the game. Outstanding job catching it. P.J. gets to his left shoulder, able to knock down the jump hook. Nice reverse inside in traffic. Omar Stanley, 12 and a half points per game over his first couple. Brings some scoring in and a good shooter from the outside as well. And a great drive by Roddy Anderson to get in the paint right there. Dump it down to Stanley for an easy layup. Hemingway to Wiggins. Tigers feeling it from long range. Three for four on three-pointers. Much needed for Chauncey Wiggins. He's gotten off to a little bit of a slow start this year. Came off the bench today, but he able to get in there and get an early three for Coach Brownell. Didn't score against Davidson, so that's got to feel good. Had to go a week with that thought in his mind. Stanley tried to get it down low. First turnover in a while by the Broncos. It's their fourth. Alex Hemingway driving the basketball, finding Chauncey Wiggins on the perimeter. As we said, you know, much needed from Chauncey Wiggins to be able to get that confidence going again. Big three right there. Hemingway and the Tigers looking to build the lead back up, but Stanley knocks it away in a strong move around Wiggins. Chauncey Wiggins committing his first personal foul. Be the second on the Clemson team. So Omar Stanley, originally from just outside of Kansas City, was at St. John's. In case you're not familiar with college hoops, it uh, was a bit of a uh, house cleaning when Rick Pitino got to the Flushing Queens campus, and he's one of those who moved on. And they love having him out of Boise. He gives them athleticism at the rim. He can really score the basketball. He played very well on the Canadian trip that they took this summer, averaged 15 points per game. But he gives them a little bit of a counterpunch to Cam Martin with his athleticism and his rim finishing ability. He's a very good shot blocker. Very nice player for the Broncos. Seven of eight on free throws coming in to just his second miss wearing a Boise State uniform.
Hits one out of two. The Broncos like so to, far for him. Yeah, the Broncos love to go to a one-two-two two after most free throws. They sh they do it right there. Just try to change it up a little bit and show the Tigers something different. I think we heard Brad Brown L pregame talk about how they may see some one-three-one. One. Boss lighted just on the floor. Gave it to Hunter, who gives to Wiggins. Nice work off the bench for Chauncey Wiggins, the Tigers sophomore out of Grayson, Georgia. Very good post feed by Chase Hunter. Was able to get Chauncey on his uh, on that angle, turn to his left shoulder, and knock it down. 24 wins a year ago. A loss to Northwestern in which they had some injury issues, some foul troubles in that NCAA tourney game. That was one of those ball games in their brackets. A lot of folks probably had Boise State on the next line coming out of that game. You can call an upset. Big Ten team knocking off one of the favorites in the Mountain West. And the Broncos have won 20 games in eight of the last 10 seasons. An amazing stat for Coach Rice. Hunter hit the dunk earlier, couldn't get the runner to fall. Martin, 6'9", light of defense. Anderson, shot clock at 15. Martin looking baseline. Strong move with the lefty hook over Lida. No, but the rebound pulled down by Keane, and there's Gerard. Boise State has done a great job early in the season on the glass. Plus 18 so far. The Tigers are a minus two and a half. That's a big key to the game today. Godfrey can't find success. Rice, one of two sons of the head coach on the team. Now Stanley backing in, and Lido will pick up the personal. Be a third team foul on the Tigers. First on Boz Lida, the UNCG transfer. How about Chauncey Wiggins so far? Chauncey Wiggins off to a great start right here. Knocks down the open three. Tigers are up by three going into the break. We love our house. The outdoor space is great, but we do have invasive weeds. Ranger! He's up here! At least Geico makes bundling my home and car insurance easy. We save so much. Stay away from my family! For bundling made easy, go to geico.com. Are you having any fun? Let's go. Okay. What you getting out Let's of living? Mine. Hey, Google. Who cares for Take a what selfie. you got if you're not having oh, any great. fun? Are you having any laugh? Oh, Are you getting hey, any laughing? If other people do, why can't you have a little fun? Have a little fun. That's the DQ Cheeseburger Lovers Deal. Two singles for five or two doubles for seven for a limited time. So, how is it? Deal this good speaks for itself, I guess. DQ, happy tastes good. Ever since I tried Hidden Valley Ranch, I finally found what I've been looking for. Mm -hmm. Oh my gosh. I know. How is this stuff so good? Hidden Valley Ranch. Only serious about flavor! For more than 35 years, Scott Clark Honda has been the dealer of choice in the Carolinas with hundreds of vehicles to choose from and lifetime warranties offered on most new and used cars. We know we'll find the right fit for you. Or let us buy your car, even if you don't buy from us. With the most modern facilities, many service bays, and luxurious amenities, we provide every customer with a top-of-the-line experience. And remember, at Scott Clark Honda, we will buy your vehicle even if you don't buy from us. So happy it hurts. Brian Adams. The So Happy It Hurts Tour. Performing decades of hits. Live across North America. Get tickets now at LiveNation.com. Once you start something new at work, you just got to keep it moving forward, right? Well, it's not that simple. Because your work involves a lot of people and scattered tools. But there is a better way. Monday.com, the platform that unifies all parts of your work so you can streamline the way you plan, manage, and track work. Because when everything is aligned, work really takes off. Learn more at Monday.com. There are paths everywhere. Some are unexpected, some lead to greatness, and some lead you exactly where you were meant to be. For the dreamers and doers of North Carolina's hospitality industry, the path is paved with opportunities to learn, grow, and advance. 
North Carolina's hotels and restaurants want you. Find the path that fits you at servingcareers.com. Tigers up by three early on against Boise State here in Little John Coliseum. Well, they've got them eyes on some big prizes this year. They already have a trophy in hand. Wins against UAB and Davidson. Nail biters each last weekend in Asheville for the Asheville Championship at the U.S. Cellular Center. Came from behind in both games. Came from behind from 18 against Davidson. The fifth largest comeback in Clemson basketball history. But a great start to the season for the Tigers. Those are the types of games sometimes as a coaching staff, it's almost more of a relief than an excitement. Um, but obviously a huge thrill for the Tigers. And as you said, seven days off in between games. Stanley now two of four from the line. Dagan Hart back after a brief rest. Goes with that face mask. Team with much more depth, just like Clemson, Boise State this year. Shefflin and Hall usually finishes that shot. Boy, PJ would like to have that one back. Chance to once again tie or retake the lead for the Broncos. That's the guy they want to have the ball in the hands of. Offensive foul on Dagan Hart. And that'll be the first on the 6A junior out of Spokane, Washington. Out of the timeout, Coach Rice goes to a, a pick and pop. Dagan Hart drives it downhill. Joe Girard puts his feet in front. I've been impressed by Joe Girard's defense so far this year. The coaching staff in the summer talked a lot about coming from the zone at Syracuse, the adjustments to playing man-to-man. -man. He's worked hard defensively in there. That's a big charge against a uh, very large young man. All we heard about was 16 points a game. Returning leading scorer in the ACC can shoot. And obviously all that on his resume, but he takes pride in the D as well. Also trying to attack the basket, and he does. Working inside on the six foot five inch Max Rice. Outstanding drive right there. The Tigers continue to get the rim, test the Broncos shot blocking ability. Tigers open up the game with a 5 0 run. Rice. Martin leads them in rebounds. Scored about eight points in his first two games apiece. That time, Hall with a nice defense. PJ came in, leading the team with six blocks. Josh Beadle on the floor. Hunter, another burst of speed to the basket. Finger roll goes and will head to the line. You see the Tigers continue to attack the rim. Chase Hunter comes downhill off that handoff from Josh Beadle. And Josh Beadle gave the Tigers a huge lift on Sunday off the bench against Davidson. Great job right there by P.J. Hall defending Cam Martin in the post. Plays without fouling. And then, as we mentioned, the Tigers want to play at the basket right there. Chase Hunter gets downhill, able to get the uh, rim finished. Now go to the line for one. 88% on limited attempts, of course, over his first three games. Seven points last Sunday against Davidson. 16 in that big win against UAB. And he was clutched down the stretch. The two free throws with just over four seconds to go against UAB to put the Tigers back ahead and eventually win the basketball game. Tigers, just like that, build the lead out to seven. Chase Hunter with seven points to lead the way. And you see the Tiger big stepping out, trying to extend some of these catches from the Broncos, trying to push their offense out just a little bit. Rice drives on Gerard, can't hit the pull-up. Clemson looking to build on its largest lead so far. In transition, Beadle, Stanley defends. Beadle reverses. And you see the Tigers with a three-guard lineup right now. Gerard, Josh Beadle, Chase Hunter, great pitch ahead. Josh Beadle attacking the rim, getting a layup for the Tigers. Right here driving it to his left, takes it to the other side of the rim to, against the shot blocker, lays it in. Geico makes car insurance as easy as loving Parmesan. Say when. Say when. Say when. When. <sighs> With 24-7 emergency roadside service, it's easy to Geico. Fresh ground pepper? Yes, please. Oof, my cable internet bill exploded. That's some yada yada. But Metro has 5G home internet for $20 if you're eligible with no exploding bills and not a yada yada. Good. I'm tired of rearranging these. 5G home internet for $20. Only at Metro. Josh Beadle 
showing you the kind of moves that made him a three star coming out of Cardinal Newman in Columbia. Tiger, sophomore guard. Redshirt sophomore from Columbia, outstanding player, probably the Tigers' most athletic perimeter player. Great job attacking the rim right there to his left hand. Another player whose scoring role could increase this season. Martin thought otherwise about a three, tries for two on Hall, and you know, the scouting report says if you're gonna go at P.J. Hall, that's the way to do it with a pump fake. The Broncos do an outstanding job of using shot fakes at the rim. Martin, uh, Dagan Hart, even Rice, they'll go down there, they use their body very well, get P.J. Hall off his feet right there out of the timeout and draw the foul. First on Hall, Tigers with four opening half fouls. Five so far for Boise State, so Hall will get a rest until the under eight. And that's been a point of emphasis by the Clemson coaching staff. They want P.J. to stay on his feet. Rice, and he'll go to the line. I know you aren't that big, but... Studying the Broncos early in the season, I was very impressed, not just with Max Rice's shooting ability, but his craftiness at the rim. You know, he'll get down there, he'll give you some shot fakes, step through, just as he did right there. He's gonna get to the free throw line. Outstanding score for the Broncos. Six-year guard. His dad is over his left shoulder, the head coach of this team. We'll talk to you more about Leon Rice in a moment. Middle of three brothers, all have played college basketball. Older brother Brock, who's now involved with the Boise State Athletic Program, was at a lower division school, and then Younger brother, Cade, a freshman on the team. Max has had a nice career. Second team all Mountain West a season ago. And he brings the Broncos back within seven. Coach Rice talked about how proud he was of how his son blends in and how hard he works. Outstanding player. The second team Mountain West Conference guard in the preseason is going to have an outstanding year. Beetle, nice move over Whiting, but couldn't get it to go. Whiting, a sophomore, did a Mormon mission to Finland after his high school career. He's a little bit older than your typical sophomore. That's going to go down from the outside for Abo. And a chance to make it even bigger than it is already. Outstanding driving kick right here. Abo knocks down his third three. Fouling has been a bit of an issue for Clemson so far in the early season. Since that timeout, Tigers have fouled in three straight possessions now. Averaged 11 and a half a season ago in his first year with Boise after transferring from Texas Tech. One. Opportunity to become the first player on the court in double figures. And with all the preseason accolades for the Bronco players, Abo quietly leads the Broncos in scoring right now. He's got 10 so far today, three made threes. Outstanding player, very difficult matchup. Well, you got to think Brad Brownell and the staff said number two on Boise State as the steal by Max Rice and a good one ahead to Abo. Hunter back to defend. Traveling is the call. Six turnover for the Broncos. We figure the Tigers scout was all about stopping number two, Dagan Hart, and then figuring out the rest from there. Absolutely. Um, Abo, though, has been so impressive in the way they play together. Uh, Max Rice talked about it after the San Francisco game, how good of a passer Dagan Hart is, and that makes everyone else on the roster a better score. Shefflin and Hunter couldn't find the handle. Tigers led by nine moments ago, trying to build on this three-point lead. Gerard off the pump fake. Inside, Godfrey, and right back up with it. R.J. Godfrey, 12 points against Winthrop, was outstanding in Asheville against Davidson. Gave the Tigers a huge lift off the bench. Tigers actually coming into the game negative in rebounds. About three rebounds fewer than the opposition, but R.J. Godfrey doesn't realize that. The sophomore from Georgia getting it done on the glass. A huge offensive rebound, puts it back in. Tigers are up. Geico makes car insurance easy. Enjoy your flight. You too. As easy as saying the wrong thing. Dad, why would you say that? Why would you say that? Are we leaving or? I thought I knew you. With an app that puts your policy in your pocket, it's easy to Geico. It's not how airports work, man. They say you've changed. They say you've changed. Ooh, the DQ. 
barbecue cheeseburger lover's deal is back. Two single cheeseburgers for only five bucks or two double cheeseburgers for just seven bucks? For real? Oh, tell me it's as good as it looks. Deal this good speaks for itself, I guess. But you better get it before it's gone. DQ, happy tastes good. King C. Gillette is an award-winning lineup of tools and facial hair care products. Men's Health's best beard trimmer for beginners. Men's Journal's best beard shampoos and washes. And GQ's best beard conditioners for soft, no-itch facial hair. Carefully crafted for every guy that wants to look his best. Curated by the name men have trusted since 1901. Gillette. Your beard is our trade. These are your tools. King C. Gillette. Scott Clark Honda has been the dealer of choice in the Carolinas for more than 35 years. We're your friends and neighbors, so we always offer a fair deal. If you're looking to sell your car, we'll buy it, and you don't even need to buy from us. We'll offer top dollar for your trade. Visit Scott Clark Honda today. Oh, hello. Hi. Did you know that every load of laundry could be worth as much as $300? Really? And your clothes just keep getting more damaged the more times you wash them. $300? That's a lot of money. Once you take it out, it's just never the same. The color always kind of fades. Add Downy to your wash to protect your clothes. Downy does more than detergent alone. It smooths and conditions fibers, so clothes look newer, longer. See? This one looks brand new, like it just came off the rack. Uh, I can't get over the smell. Saves me money. I'm starting to like Downy. Downy saves loads. If you do it better than Leon Rice, Boise State's head coach for nearly a decade and a half, a former Mark Few assistant at Gonzaga. J.D., this guy has uh, come in and made Boise a basketball school. They're, they're in their golden era of hoops, it's safe to say. It's amazing when you start studying the Broncos, being on the East Coast like we are, you don't know. They have eight 20-win seasons in the last 10 years, which is more than UCLA, Arizona. It's really remarkable, and he's done an outstanding job. We played him when I was at the College of Charleston in an exempt event. Really, really solid program. Playing in a conference that's quietly become some kind of basketball league. The Mountain West and a four-point play. Shibuzo Abo. Actually, they said it was a two that he made in the wing. I think they checked. I think they actually checked and revised that during the timeout. Couldn't get it to go. And up and in on the putback, though, by Omar Stanley. 26-24 game. I think they're saying the foul happened after the shot. Wow. Mm. Before the timeout. So that was crazy. And now the Broncos are in the bonus with over seven minutes to play in the first half. Tigers led by nine just moments ago. Clark on the perimeter with Gerard, but that's not necessarily the game plan. Gerard tries to go underneath Rice, and he does. Very impressive, Joe Gerard. We've seen him now twice use that shot fake, get into the paint, and score. Jace Whiting, mom is the head coach at her alma mater, BYU. His sister is a star player there as well. So talk about from a basketball family. Dad was a really good player, played professionally over in Italy. So. Very impressive Boise State roster when you talk about the basketball background of so many of these players. Dagan Hart has a Clemson background. We'll detail for you as we go on today. Here's Stanley from the right wing. And look at Godfrey flying in. Pulls down another rebound, and I believe that's number two on the guy who's number two in your scorecard. Their star player, Dagenhart. That's a uh, that's a very big foul. R.J. Godfrey comes flying in, grabs the rebound. Um, High-level basketball game like today. Those are the calls that, uh, as head coaches, we could live with uh, without that one. Just let them play on. It's not going to change the game in terms of if you don't call that foul. But that's a big foul on the first team All Mountain West Conference forward. Bert Smith, Jeffrey Clark, Brian Schnur, our officiating crew today. So he heads to the bench. Six and a half to go. Probably won't see him to the second half. Martin on his place, defending the ball with Stanley. Gerard, pump fake on Rice. Now the pull up. Boy, that would have been spectacular had Clark gotten that one to fall. And we see the Broncos bring a double on P.J. Hall for the first time today. Martin, 6'9", likes to shoot. Now two of four in his brief time with the Broncos team from long range. Highly decorated Ford, three-time All-American as a D2 player, has had an outstanding career. 
And Dylan Hunter poked in the eye, and the foul is called. Cam Martin, year seven in college basketball. One of the most decorated players probably in the country this year when you consider seventh year of college basketball, three-time All-American as a Division II player, won a national championship at Kansas, and was a three-time academic All-American during his time as a D2 player. Outstanding career for Cam Martin. Bryce just picked up his first foul just outside of Oklahoma City. Cam Martin, UConn, Oklahoma is his hometown. Had his D1 career high in their first game this year when he had 12 against Vanguard. And played at Missouri Southern State, one of the best Division II programs in the country. So many of the Division IIs in the Midwest, outstanding basketball. And so you see Cam go from there to Kansas, to Boise State after starting his career at Jacksonville State, but an outstanding player. Dylan Hunter just knocked down his first career, his first free throw attempt of the season for the Clemson team. And I thought Dylan really impacted the game Sunday for the Tigers against Davidson. He started the second half. The Tigers went three guards, hit a big three early in the half. It was the first three he had made of the year. Brought a spark for the Tigers. You're starting to see that confidence. You compared him to his brother Chase and how he's settling in. We're seeing a jump from the young sophomore from Atlanta. The younger brother now with five points. And the Clemson lead back out to three. Tigers have led by as many as nine in this opening half. First ever meeting between Boise State and the Clemson Tigers in men's hoops. Ace Whiting, the sophomore. And again, older than your average sophomore after doing a mission trip right after high school. A lot of experience, really, on both sides. Abo trying to spin on Godfrey. Couldn't get the fadeaway. Nice defense by the Tigers sophomore forward. And we'll get a double dribble called. I don't know the last time I've seen a double dribble called in a college game. <laughs> and so we've seen two calls. One was the travel after the pitch ahead and transition, which Coach Rice did not like. And now that transition double dribble. Uh, interesting early, early in the year. This is a blended crew, part ACC, part Mountain West, but obviously a very high level game, high, very high level officiating crew. Tigers averaging 10 turnovers a game. Have six so far to match Boise State. Martin with Dagenhart on the bench trying to take on the scoring duties and Hunter the last to touch it. Just two seconds on the shot clock. Let's see what they do here. Whiting in. Rice. And a shot clock violation. First we've had in the game. The seventh turnover for the Broncos right now early in the game. That's been a little bit of an issue so far. Uh, Coach Rice talked about it. You know, obviously uh, not young guards, experienced guards, Roddy Anderson, but the loss of Marcus Shaver from this past season who had 111 assists to 64 turnovers, an outstanding guard for the Broncos. They're figuring it out a little bit on the perimeter right now taking care of the basketball. Wiggins defended by the freshman Andrew Meadow and he goes right over top of the Californian stands at 6-7 gives you a uh, and you'll see it closer on some close shots it gives you a look of some famous characters both inside of uh, basketball and uh, and of film lore over the years absolutely the staff said they even joked about it during recruiting and that, it, that it's been a point of conversation that's what we'll just back to us we'll talk more about it when we get a close-up of Meadow and the reach-in foul on Rice, and that'll be his second after he turned it over. Each team has put the other in the bonus. Boy, this is one that if you're Rice to get number two that way, you're just kicking yourself. Yeah, both of those fouls, Dagenhart, Rice, those are tough ones. But we're seeing a lot of the game within the game. So these two head coaches know each other well. They've worked on the Nike circuit together as they've traveled some. But we're starting to see some changes out of timeouts. Boise has started to double P.J. Hall out of the last media timeout in the post. Now the Tigers come with a double that forces a turnover. Kind of that coaching matchup within the game. Alex Hemingway on the free throw line. Tigers so far perfect on three attempts. Hemingway 
just like the guy who was just there, Dylan Hunter. First free throw here in the fourth game of the season. Knocks it down to shoot the bonus. So we mentioned the freshman, Andrew Meadow. I mean, I'm sorry, you, you look right at him, you're thinking Hanson Brothers, <laughs> right off the bat. I mean, you're missing the story, and then a little bit of Kurt Rambis in there, too, and he's a guy from Santa Clarita, California, so. I love the goggles. Hanson uh, Brothers the goggles. movie Slapshot, if that's a dated reference lost on some younger viewers. I wish I had that hair. And a three-star recruit they think is really going to help them and, and going to grow his game. He, his AAU team, he played on Bronny James' AAU team, so he's been around some high-level hoops in his day. And he averaged over 13 points per game for the Broncos on their Canadian tour this summer, so will be a very good player for Coach Rice and the staff for years to come. Tigers back out to a seven-point lead. Boise State had shaved a nine-point deficit down to two. Abo, and he'll go to the line. And P.J. Hall second, picks up his second. And that's going to be the second foul on P.J. As you were saying, that's a big call right there. They say you've changed. They say you've changed. Deal with it. When you order a Big Mac in the McDonald's app today, You'll earn points you can redeem for a free Big Mac in your future. Future, you says. Thanks. Earn free food with the app. These Black Friday deals end Saturday, only at Target. BMW, Freightliner, Ford, and many more of the world's leading brands hired Universal Technical Institute grads. And now, we're expanding to new industries. Since 1965, UTI has become known for its training in fields like auto, diesel, and welding. And with new programs coming in fields like aviation maintenance, HVACR, and wind energy, you can get more. Don't wait. Now's the time to train for a career you're passionate about. Visit uti.edu today. Let's try something new. Um, okay. How is any of this possible? Just relax. This Wednesday, <laughs> once upon a time, it's a twist. This is crazy. We love crazy. Yeah. It's not me you should be afraid of. <laughs> Disney's Wish. Rated PG. Only in theaters Wednesday. Here in Little John, Tigers have a seven-point lead. Big storyline in this game. Boise State, top player, one of the best in the Mountain West. Tyson Dagenhardt over on the bench with three personal fouls. There's his dad, Yukon Dagenhardt, a unique first name. And... A very special connection to Clemson. He was a student here, competed on the track team as a distant runner at Clemson from 1991 to 93. He was from Spokane, Washington, but Bob Pollock, the track and field coach, the elder Dagenhart tells us, recruited him, came here for a couple of years, and he moved back out west and finished up his college career at Eastern Washington. Son Tyson grew up in the Spokane area where his mom and dad are teachers, and he was recruited uh, away from schools like Gonzaga to come to Boise State. But how do you like that? You schedule a game with Boise, and well, you know that their star player's dad actually attended school. So it's been a really special weekend for UConn Dagenhardt, the elder 
came back, got to see old friends, went to the football game yesterday, so the first time he'd seen a game in Death Valley since, what, the Ken Hatfield era. <laughs> yeah. And uh, a lot of his friends from Clemson come to games regularly, so they got to meet up. And really a neat side story to this ball game. The star Boise State's dad attended the school his son's going against, but the son not being able to play in this game for the final six and a half minutes of the first half because of foul trouble. Big story. Tigers up by five, looking to add to that. Hunter hung up, and it's knocked away. Good job by Martin to Abo. Abo already his eighth double-figure scoring game since he arrived at Boise State from Texas Tech last year. Martin, the throwdown, and one. Godfrey picks up the foul. R.J. Godfrey got a little too close right there to Cam Martin, started to lean on that left shoulder. The scout was don't let him get to his left. He turns the other way, finishes at the rim. An outstanding play by Cam Martin. Terrific finish going back to the free throw line again. Cam Martin, just by the early returns, looks like he has found a very good home to close out his long college basketball career. And he knocks down the free throw. He was just 2 of 5 coming into the game. But of course, it's early. And again, Boise State back within two after trailing by as many as nine during the opening half. Wiggins and Godfrey out high. Hunter gets it back behind a screen from Shefflin. Outstanding shot by Chase Hunter. He got off to such a good start shooting the ball from three last season. A little bit slower so far this year, but it started to heat up since the Davidson game. Knocks down his first three attempt, 33% on the year. Anderson drives past Shefflin. Nice move. Roddy Anderson, the UC San Diego transfer at 6-3, went right past and then finished against a 6-8 Shefflin. Anderson, the quick guard, the transfer from San Diego, as you said, led all freshmen in that league at 15.8 points per game last season. Wiggins thought about it, goes around Abo. And Godfrey. There to finish. R.J. Godfrey does a great job for the Tigers. His energy level, his activity around the rim, one of Coach Brown's favorites because of his activity. You know, you got Biggs and Hall and Shefflin who can kind of low block you. Then you've got guys who can play at the rim like Wiggins and Godfrey. And some real versatility with being able to attack. And then you add in the guards like Hunter who's already thrown one down. I think they complement each other very well. Martin, and they'll get him for the travel. And that'll be a ninth turnover on Boise State here in the opening half of play. 13 per game over their first two. Outstanding uh, drive right here. Chauncey Wiggins get down, gets downhill. Would like to be able to finish that. But again, R.J. Godfrey coming in, tipping it in. Led the team last year in field goal percentage. Uh, outstanding sophomore from Georgia. Chase Hunter. Experienced Tigers senior, Hemingway. Anderson flying in for the rebound. On their way to 24 wins and another NCAA trip last year, Boise State knocked off the likes of Washington State, Colorado, and Texas A&M, and trying to get a win on an ACC floor. They're 6-1 since 2022, 2023 against P5 schools. The Broncos will play anyone, anywhere. I'll tell you one thing, Abo, guy came to them from Texas Tech, playing any league. That's a good-looking jump shot. Off the dribble. When you Bills watch on him. his points total, he's got 13 to lead all scores. And when you watch him, he reminds you of what in the NBA what they would call a three and D type guy. Can make an open three, obviously can play at the rim, but an outstanding defender. Got a hand on it from behind. And was lobbying his case, but it'll stay in the Clemson end with 12 on the shot clock. Tough guy to defend because he can square up, he can attack, but also can shoot off the dribble. Strong move by Shefflin, just ran into trouble. He did. To finish the point on Abo, Coach Brownell talked about it in his pregame. It's a very difficult matchup for the Tigers because he can play some four, he can slide up as a three. The Tigers have had success with a three-guard lineup since the Davidson game, so the matchup becomes very important. And Dagan Hart, three fouls. Abo has picked up the load. He's kept the Broncos in the game right now. Already three double-figure scoring games in their first three. Give him 15 so far. Tigers shooting 54% from the field, 57% beyond the arc. The lead, though, just a mere three. Off the inbound, Gerard, such a soft touch. Outstanding finisher around the rim. Very impressive what he's been able to do inside the three-point line so far this season. 
Well, pressure in the backcourt, and Abu can handle it as well as Clark defends. Is that one of the reasons why Clark was in the starting lineup today because of their size on the perimeter? I think so. Uh, Chauncey Wiggins, they're just trying to figure out that, you know, that third guard. Um, I think the Tigers would like to be able to play a smaller guard there from time to time, but as Coach Brunell has talked about, their depth has been very effective this year, but a lot of it is just trying to figure out which combination works. Jack Clark was hurt in the preseason. Uh, Alex Hemingway was hurt in the preseason, so they're still trying to figure themselves out. First on Chase Hunter. Anderson knocking down the free throw, and that's his first of the season. So Boise State has taken, this will be the 14th free throw now. And so it's really, when Boise State has not turned the basketball over, they've been very efficient offensively. And they're 11 of 14, Tigers are 5 of 5. But based on Clemson's strategy coming in, you'd think it'd be Clemson who'd gotten to the line 14 times as often as they've tried to attack the basket. Gerard again going strong. Keen defended. Tigers wanted the whistle. Three-point game. Broncos a chance to get back within one, maybe tie. Anderson behind a screen from Stanley. You'll see the differential as we wind down here in the opening half. Looks like Coach Brunell is going to let him go right here. Looks like the Tigers will lead for a second time over the course of their first four games in this 3-0 start. Coming up on five, Gerard Clark couldn't handle it. Four seconds to go, and it'll head the other way. Coach Brownell's disappointed in that possession. Ran a fade screen action for Joe Gerard to get him downhill. Gerard continues to attack off the bounce, got to the rim, but tried to kick it to Jack Clark. Carter couldn't quite redirect to the corner. Eighth turnover of the Tigers. Remember, Leon Rice used a timeout earlier to break momentum after they fell behind by a nine, so he doesn't have to use it or lose it. In it comes Keen. Back to Martin. What a count it had it gone for Stanley, but that's how we arrive at halftime. Entertaining first 20 minutes of hoops. Seeing really did it for Syracuse against the Tigers. Joe Girard. Just a small stat, and if you follow Clemson, you probably can get an idea as to where that little nugget was dropped in from to our booth. Paul, foul trouble. Put him on the bench for the stretch run in the first half. He can't get his first attempt here out of the break. And Coach Leon Rice is going to start Omar Stanley here in the second half. Bring Tyson Dagenhart off the bench. Martin feeding. Drive to the basket. Stanley, the St. John transfer, has a chance to tie us up. Omar Stanley's been very good for Coach Rice so far off the bench. Today, as we said, he had a great summer coming over from St. John's. There you see the cut. Catches it right there on the rim. Cam Martin is an outstanding passer for the Broncos. Both of these teams are very similar offensively. Their bigs can shoot, but they're both very good passers. They weren't a very deep team last year despite their 24 wins and at-large bid to the NCAA tourney. That's something that really has Leon Rice, their head coach, excited. The depth on this ball club, and you're seeing it from a lot of guys, and Stanley, one of those. Keys to the game, let's revisit those, J.D. The big one for the Boise State Broncos was to take care of the basketball. Nine turnovers in the first half. Uh, they have not been able to do that. And then for the Tigers, it was their shooting against the Boise State three-point field goal defense. So far, the Tigers have shot the ball well. How about the offensive rebound by Shefflin? Four boards in the game. He'll try to add to his point total. Clark flying in, and they're going to get the foul against Abo, and that'll be number one on the senior out of San Diego. So the first two trips offensively for the Tigers, they've gone down low, first to P.J. Hall, now to Ian Shefflin. Haven't been able to finish, but Jack Clark there with some activity on the offensive glass. And foul was on the floor. Initially, it looked like they were setting up for free throws. A team foul on each side early in the second half. P.J. Hall, just two points so far, of course, came in averaging over 21 a game. Clark losing Abo. Knocks down the long two. Again, another player that the Tigers want to get more involved offensively. Nine points per game last year at NC State. Outstanding shot fake into that pull-up by Jack Clark. Clark. 
Anderson tries to step through off balance. Boy, that would have been a fabulous finish. Of course, he wanted the whistle, didn't get it. Clark, Hunter in transition. Hall down low. Stanley defending, and from the wing, the whistle. And P.J. Hall's fortunate right now. He that, that very easily could have been a block on the other end. Coach Rice and the Broncos staff thought so. And then P.J.'s gotten a couple finishes at the rim where he felt like he got hit that didn't go in. Uh, felt like he could have gotten fouled. The Tiger senior take a deep breath right now. Settle back in. 80% this year. Knocks down his first free throw attempt of the afternoon. Paul, the 20 point games to start out the season against Winthrop and UAB. Then he had 17 against Davidson. The fact that he started with back to back 20 point games was somewhat rare. Hadn't happened in the program in over 20 years. Yeah, it was a team that I was on. Will Solomon, 1999, 2000, first two games of the season, came out uh, 20 point games. Has not happened very often in Clemson basketball. Back in 54-55, star of the Clemson team back then established the record with 16 straight of 20 or more to begin that campaign. Abo from the corner. Clark closed late, probably impacted the shot. Hunter, Tigers trying to build in a four-point lead after we were tied at 41. Gerard, Rice who picked up a couple of fouls in the first half defending. Clark can't finish. Shefflin scrapping. Tigers keep the ball. Hall. And we'll go back to the line. The Tigers have continued to get the basketball to the rim. They have not been able to finish here early in the second half, but have been able to get to the offensive glass. P.J. Hall drives it right here, tries to get to the other side. They get the whistle and the foul, but go back to Jack Clark for just a second. The NC State transfer has done an outstanding job here early in the second half, creating second opportunities for the Tigers on the offensive glass. Martin's second foul. Tigers have 21 rebounds, nine on the offensive glass, and Hall extends the lead to five. And that was something that Boise State has done an outstanding job of so far this season. One of those games was a non-Division I game, but Coach Rice and his staff take great pride in their defensive rebounding. The Tigers actually have not rebounded it well this year. As good as they were last year, plus three, they're minus almost three this year. That's something that the coaching staff feels like they've got to get better at. And granted, against only one D1 opponent in their first two games, Boise State coming in nearly plus 20, and that'll obviously come down, but they're a team that looks to be plus in rebounding on both nights. It's very got to a six-point lead. It's very interesting when you read the notes. Boise State's size is actually just slightly bigger than Clemson's, which tells you something about the Mountain West. Martin hit a three in the first half. Misses everything that time. Clark, Abo got a screen. Paul can't knock down the three-point try. P.J. 40% beyond the arc so far. Rice, second team, all Mountain West performer, able to drain the tray. And Max Rice can heat up very quickly. He made two threes in 19 seconds against San Francisco to push the Bronco lead out. Coach Rice wants to get him going, come out of the halftime. His first field goal, now Abo the steal. Rice in transition. Thought about it too long. A little bit of a hesitation. Now the Tigers push the pace. Godfrey down low, and Abo called for a personal. That'll be his second. Great pace right there by Chase Hunter. He had the transition push off the Max Rice miss three. Decided to pull it back, allow R.J. Godfrey to settle down at the rim right there. Very good possession by the senior Tiger point guard. Boise at 43% beyond the arc. Tigers 50%. Four of eight for Clemson, six of 14. For Boise, which was shooting just 24% on three-pointers over the first couple of games. Boss Lida back on the floor. Clark. And it'll be a kick ball by King. Tyson Dagenhart makes his first appearance of the second half right here. Just a few minutes into uh, the second half. Three personals when he went to the bench with about six and a half to play in the opening half. I thought he'd only picked up his second. 
And I have a feeling they modified that in the box score afterward. Gerard, his kind of shot from the wing. Outstanding shot by Joe Gerard. He had a possession against Davidson where he took back-to-back -to -back threes in the same possession. It was one of those moments where you could see him step up. Knocks down his first tray in three attempts. Clemson back up by six. Gerard defending Rice. Anderson will set things up. Shot clock coming up on five. Anderson doesn't have the size on Godfrey. Baseline. And Keene couldn't save it for his team. Great defensive possession there by R.J. Godfrey to switch that ball screen. Looking to pass and said Gerard can't get the shot to go and a foul inside. Looks like Omar Stanley just picked up his third. And that's the case. Joe Gerard, the Clemson Tiger sharpshooter, is getting it going from late for the Tigers. Really a, a feared weapon in the ACC for the past several seasons. He is, and he made his 300th career three this past Sunday against Davidson. I think you've really saw, saw him start to settle into his role here for the Tigers. He's starting to feel very comfortable. You know, we're talking during the timeout, a lot of really great developmental opportunities, even for a guy with his resume since he arrived in Brad Brownell's program. One of the big reasons why he chose Clemson was because of P.J. Hall and Chase Hunter. He knew he was going to get open looks because of the space they would require. Turnover inside, Godfrey was trying to go strong to the hole. Tigers led by as many as nine in the opening half. Dagenhardt has not been a factor for Boise State, and that's going to change. Going to have to change if they want to have a chance, but they give it up again. Great off-ball defense by Lida there to rotate over on that back cut. Dylan Hunter. Now Godfrey down low. Gerard trying to lose the defender, Rice. Finishing as Rice hit the deck. Great pass by R.J. Godfrey. You're starting to see Godfrey become very confident offensively. You saw him drive it, pivot, then take his time, find Gerard. He's playing with good pace right now. Back out to an eight-point lead. Martin, light of defense. Soft touch gets the roll. Outstanding possession for the Broncos. The Tigers have pushed it to eight or nine a couple of times. Much needed basket from Cam Martin there. Broncos second player in double figures. Martin now has 10. He's four of six in the field. Clark, difficult shot with a hand in his face from Dagenhart. Boise State on the run. Clark repays the debt. Wonderful job by the NC State transfer. His second steal is a Tiger. Here's Gerard. Outstanding drive by Joe Girard there. This game has quickly became very physical. Every drive to the basket, there's a lot of contact. Just like that, Clemson back in front. Eight-point margin. Backdoor play. Knocked out of bounds by Joe Girard. Tigers trying to knock off a, another Mountain West team. Joe Girard's ability off the dribble has been outstanding so far for the Tigers this year, showing that he's much more than just a catch and shoot guy, the 3.5 assists per game, the ability to score in the paint, and then the denial right there in that back cut was outstanding. That's not easy. And it'll stay in this end. Clemson once beat Air Force out of the Mountain West in an NIT semifinal game. And Clemson has a couple of Mountain West connections on their bench. Special assistant Jeff Reynolds was a longtime head coach uh, at, for the Air Force Falcons. So he knows Leon Rice in the program very well for the Broncos. Chase Whiting, his point guard for them, the sophomore. Now Martin backing in on Hall. Can't get the hook to go. Dagan Hart offensive glass. Whiting out front. That would have been big for the Broncos' psyche, if nothing else. Tigers a chance for a 10-point lead. Hunter delivers. Chase Hunter continues to push the ball in transition for the Tigers. Is able to get out on the open floor right there, do what Chase Hunter does best. Push the basketball, finishing at the rim for the... Absolutely. The Tigers were very good defensively last year, leading the ACC in opponent field goal percentage. Coming out of Asheville this past weekend, they felt like that was something that they could do better. Uh, and they've done that today. Boise State is an outstanding offensive team. They wanted to clean up the fouling at halftime. 14 free throws for the Broncos. 
Uh, Brad Brunel places a huge emphasis in practice of playing without fouling. But Boise State is very hard to guard. You're seeing them moving a ton right now. A lot of back cuts, a lot of cutting to the rim, really testing the Tigers. Rebounding, big story. And the fact that Clemson is 5 of 9 beyond the arc against a team that was holding opponents to 24% in the early going. Also a big part of this game. Biggest lead for the Tigers so far out of the timeout call by Leon Rice, the Boise State head coach. And we'll get a foul down low. What do you know out of a timeout? P.J. Hall. So that'll be his third. Number three on Hall. Mm -hmm. He'll go to the bench. Ian Shefflin will come in. So now both of the first team all league guys for Boise State and Clemson with three fouls. Dagan Hart stays on the floor at the bottom of your screen, having picked up three in the opening half. Martin has been a go-to guy for them today. Already 10 points. He'll spin around Ian Shefflin's defense, and he matches his best effort so far. He had 12 in their opening game against Vanguard. And Cam Martin has shown you he can turn to either shoulder. The Tigers have played his left shoulder. That's the second time he's turned to the right. Keen defending Gerard. Gerard's 13 points to lead Clemson, looking to add on. Couldn't get it to fall, but Godfrey could. R.J. Godfrey continues to be active on the offensive glass for the Tigers. Godfrey's that kind of player because he can get so high up. You got to stop based on the clock issue. But he can, he can get so high up with the leaping ability, he's really the perfect player to try to follow up on the offensive glass because he, he leaps so straight so vertically, if you know what I mean. Well, he comes from a great athletic family. His dad was in the NFL for over 10 years, a linebacker for the Dallas Cowboys. But I think the best thing Godfrey does, he's obviously a tremendous athlete, but he knows who he is. You know, he's relentless to the offensive glass. He's, he's going to go try to get every single one of them, and he's done an outstanding job for the Tigers early in the season. He's their third leading scorer right now this year. Ooh, almost a travel by Stanley, and now away from the ball, a foul. Shefflin. And he picks up his second personal foul. So as we mentioned, this game has become very physical, very much like an ACC game. Foul count was 5-1 to one coming out of that last media timeout. Two quick ones on the Tigers. Abo getting a lot of attention after the big first half. Stanley on the low block. Couldn't get it to fall. Strong rebound down low by Dylan Hunter. Hemingway. Godfrey out high. Abo defends. The Hunter brothers on the floor at the same time. Chase exploring. Penetrates on Whiting. Knocked it away. Godfrey fouled on the floor. R.J. Godfrey getting it done in a lot of ways for Clemson. The highly athletic, energetic, active transfer portal. He's made the most of his seven-year career. Started at Jacksonville State University and then transferred to Missouri Southern State. Three-time All-American, three-time academic All-American, wins a national championship at Kansas, and now gets to complete his career at a really good Boise State. That's an outstanding story, and he's going to have an outstanding season. Outstanding set play out of the timeout. Hemingway. Adding to the Tigers' three-point barrage. First one made for him in two attempts. Lead grows to 13, biggest so far. That's a big plus for the Tigers. Alex has been hurt early in the preseason. He's starting to get into a rhythm now. Dagan Hart has been contained once again. Godfrey and Shefflin doing good work near the basket. That part of the game where Boise State in this second half has yet to get any kind of offensive flow going, and I'm starting to run out on him. Tigers led 41 38 at the break, and you can see the differential in points since halftime. Shefflin forcing late in the shot clock. Stanley the rebound. And you're seeing a possession where Coach Brownell wanted the Tigers to move the basketball side to side. He felt like in the first three games they had gotten a little eager from time to time. The Tigers worked it late into the shot clock there. Tigers doing a good job denying good looks out on the wing in this second half. Abo tries to defy that, missing badly. Stanley battles. 
Godfrey coming away with it. More scrappy play by Ian Shefflin to go with it. The Tigers have been outstanding defensively in the first 10 minutes of this second half. That was a great best, uh, baseline rotation by R.J. Godfrey. Hunter. Pretty move to set it up. Godfrey right there for the bounce. Trying to get it to his teammate, Dylan Hunter, and he does. Shefflin. And the foul be called. Abo picking up another personal. You can't say enough about R.J. Godfrey's activity on the basketball court and what that does for the Tigers. He has become an outstanding defender without the basketball. He rotated over, blocked the shot, and now he comes up with the loose ball on the floor right there. The way that the Tiger post players complement each other is outstanding. R.J. Godfrey is not a guy that's hunting shots or trying to shoot threes. Just really active on the offensive glass and outstanding in off-ball defense. Three now on Abo, who leads all scorers with 15, but has been quiet in the second half. Tigers now in the bonus. Seven fouls against Boise State. <laughs> Shefflin just does a lot of things really well. So far in the game from the free throw line, had not gone to the line until then. So early on in his junior year, he's seven of seven on free throws. 15 point advantage. Very important possession right here for Boise State. They want to try to get a basket, get a couple of stops together, try to get this back under 10. Rice, shot clock at 10. Stanley looks low for Dagenhart, heads to the basket. Change hands in the air, kind of threw it down toward the hoop. Outstanding finish there by Omar Stanley. The Tigers are going to stay at home on the perimeter with other guys, Oppo in particular. Omar Stanley, one on one in the post. That ended a better than three minute scoring drought for the Broncos. Off the dribble, Gerard. Pretty stuff. I would say that uh, Joe Gerard feels pretty comfortable in this other shade of orange now. Very good. Gave confident. the uh, Michael Jordan uh, hands up look to the. Folks sitting on the baseline. Stanley. Rice as Gerard hit the floor. Won't go down though. What a tough go of it from the field in the second half for the Broncos. And you see another possession here. Coach Brownell slowing the Tigers down just a little bit. He wants to get a good possession here. Wants to see him execute. Gerard for two. Joe Give him 18. Yeah, Joe Girard is playing really well. Came off that baseline pin down. He settled in very nicely for Coach Brennell and the Tigers. 17 points, five assists against Davidson last Sunday. 18 point deficit for Dagenhard in Boise State. And they're all Mountain West player. We'll head to the free throw line. And the Tigers are doing this right now with Chase Hunter on the bench, PJ Hall on the bench. So you're seeing Joe Girard be what Coach Brennell and the Tigers thought that he could be when he made the decision to transfer to Clemson. Just an instant scoring kind of guy, and once again, a threat from three point range, and also free throw line jumper right there. He, he can hit him three throw line extended. I mean, he's really got a lot of interesting aspects to his game. Dagan Hart, likewise, although he hasn't shown it today, but fellow that his coach will tell you pretty much is perfect in everything he does as a 4 0 student, as well as being really good on the court. He has a great podcast too, Pete. I had a chance this week to uh, check out his podcast. He he interviewed the Boise State quarterback. He has his teammates on there. Coach Rice has gotten on there a few times. He is a very popular guy in Boise, Idaho. They're going to get him to the bench with those three personal fouls. Give him five in the game. That's just one of five, though, from the field. Tigers extending a three-point advantage at the break. Now to as many as 18 here in the second half. Gerard, the guy you want to have the ball. Hall back in the game. Says he. And another Joe Gerard assist. Came off that pin down. Knew exactly where P.J. Hall was going to be. Dumped it down. Got another assist. Tigers haven't needed all that much out of P.J. Hall. Give him eight in the contest. 
Nice turnout on a Sunday afternoon. Getting back into it after that. Anderson dogged by Dylan Hunter. Martin driving on Hall, trying to get him a fourth personal call. Godfrey helping out. Rice off one foot. Max Rice is a very good scorer. Can put the ball on the deck, drive it to the rim, gets inside the free throw line right there and puts it off the glass. Seven for Rice, he averages 11. Tigers, though, maintain a 16-point lead. Coming up on seven to play. Hall inside over Martin, and one. I think one of the biggest takeaways so far from this game has been the Tigers' ability to execute offensively in the second half. Coach Brownell wanted them to slow down just a little bit, be able to get the shot that he wanted. They're able to get it right there inside. Play that Coach Brownell wants to draw it up. He's done a great job in driving kicks, spaces, gets threes. But his ability to ta attack off the dribble has probably been the biggest surprise. Uh, he's very effective. He's very efficient offensively. Been outstanding early in the season for the Tigers. Got off to a little bit of a slow start, uh, but it has really come alive in the last two games. Paul unable to hit the free throw. 18-point advantage with J.D. Powell. Pete Gannity with you here in Little John. First of the men's women's doubleheader. Tiger women play after this contest against Longwood. Tough day for Dagenhardt, but that was part of the Tiger game plan that's worked out so far. Gerard, again, 15 attempts, 11 inside of the arc. So you think of this guy as one who's going to live out there and just try to hit threes, but he's got a lot of game. He does. He's very crafty with the basketball. He's an outstanding passer. <laughs> and there's some game, too. And he's pretty Different good size, well. same effectiveness. Yeah, P.J. Hall is very effective. He's really come into his uh, very comfortable with that little turnaround jump jumper where he can elevate over defenders. Stanley in the corner for Anderson. Can't get the bounce. Shefflin another rebound. And this is the type of November basketball game that's going to help both of these teams. Boise State is going to go on to play Virginia Tech in Orlando. Uh, Clemson will play Alabama after Alcorn State. But this is a very physical basketball game right now. Both teams will get better because of it. Hall 0 for 2 beyond the arc. And a foul on the other end is uh, pretty nice for a show, but he won't get credit for the block. And, and you know, interestingly, Clemson will return the game to Boise next year. They did a home at home, and Leon Rice, during his 14 years guiding Boise State, has never had an ACC team come out there. It's got to be one of the few. A Tiger team has played in Boise before in the NCAA tourney back in the late 80s. This is only the fifth game that Boise State has ever played against an ACC team. Uh, but it's a great home and home series. It's coaches that have gotten to know each other very well. Uh, two teams that are very similar. It's a great early uh, season matchup for both of them. Anderson. Clark picked up his second foul, by the way. Just the fifth of the Tigers here was coming up on five and a half to go in the second half. Miss on the force by Anderson. Roddy Anderson is going to be an outstanding point guard for the Broncos. Got it going early in the second half, but going to be very good for Coach Rice throughout the season. Tigers have broken this game open on five of their last six. Pretty move, Hunter, and just as nice of a finish. Outstanding job by Chase Hunter being able to attack the rim. That was a big part of the game plan for the Tigers. Their guards have been able to do just that. The lead grows to 22. Martin drives on Hall. Little contact. And Hall with a glance to the closest official. And that's one of those calls. PJ's not going to get that call right now after getting upset earlier in the second half. I, I believe officials remember those types of things. Um, but PJ wants to play without fouling. Stay vertical right there, which he did. Stay on his feet. Don't try to block it every single time. You and everyone else who's ever coached college basketball with that thought, I would suppose. <laughs> Chase Hunter has been outstanding on the bounce for the Tigers. He continues to attack the rim, gets there to the basket, able to finish there for the Tigers. The senior guard is having a great season so far. 17 on the shot clock as Hunter gets it into Clark. A lot of weapons for the Tigers. Not that time for Gerard. Now two of five on three-point attempts. Boise State trying for a late run. Dagenhard past Hall, then Shefflin. And you see his versatility there. Able to drive the basketball, make a change of direction move, and finish there at the rim. Just his second field goal in the game. He's two for seven from the field. 
Give him seven in the contest. Closest thing to a run that Broncos have had here in the second half. Cutting what was a 22 point deficit down to 18. Hall. And skying for the rebound. The 6 3 Whiting. Rice in transition. Hill fire. Backside rebound trial. Try Abo. And Shefflin able to knock it away. Outstanding block out right there by Jack Clark. He did not get the rebound, but he led to the rebound. Nasty spill for Gerard. Foul was on the floor, so he'll have a one and one opportunity on the line. The Tigers continue to execute offensively. Joe Girard, great pace. Tiger guards continue to play at the rim. Good form. A couple of free throws upcoming. Played at Syracuse, as you probably know, from just east of there in Glen Falls, New York. So he's in store for the best winter of his life. If, uh, the factor in snow and he hits the front end of the one and one outstanding player from the upstate of new york played for a very good nike eybl team the albany city rocks coached by the legendary jimmy hicks does an outstanding job they try oh, that down jimmy here. hicks yeah it comes down to augusta georgia every year for the peach jam outstanding program up there and indeed a 20-point game for gerard great free throw shooter tiger team as many weapons as I can remember them having in quite a while. Martin, strong move, and that'll be a fourth on Hall. Even the Sweet 16 team of 2017 and 18, which had guys who could score both inside and out. And the lost story I've always thought on that is that Dante Grantham got hurt in January and wasn't a factor as part of that run. And how good would they have been if he stayed healthy? But this team has as much resourcefulness maybe as I've seen in, in quite a while. And so I think talking to the coaching staff this week, this is a really talented team. And so at times, because they were so talented, players felt like they weren't being selfish. They felt like, hey, I can go score, and they could. And so what ended up happening was they were playing at a little bit faster, I don't want to say pace, but just they were moving a step too quick. And so Coach Brownell and the staff this week wanted them to slow down a little bit. Let's execute when we need to execute. And you've seen that today. Is that what led to the big deficit, you think, in the opening half against Davidson? I do, yes. You know, they, they, they shoot the ball very well from three. It's going to be Clemson's best three-point shooting team in Clemson history. But they don't want to just rely on the first one. Let's move it side to side a little bit and find a better one. And when you got a guy like that, Hall, who can do things like that, didn't fall that time, you've got to keep defenses honest. You're going to keep defenses on us because they've got to make sure they've got someone to help on him. Martin trying to build on a real good scoring game for him. Hunter, another rebound. And I think an indirect part of that is the way the Tigers wanted to attack the paint with their guards today. When the ball touches the paint and then it comes back out to three, those threes become much more uh, efficient. Hunter can't get it to fall. Foul down low. Whiting trying to box out Hall. Second on Whiting. And now with 10 on Boise State. Two free throw shot opportunity upcoming for Hall, who, despite his foul trouble, a fourth consecutive double figure scoring game with 12. Told you Boise State on a 10 day Eastern swing during this break up coming for them with Thanksgiving heading on down to play three games at Disney they'll see Mike Young of Virginia Tech on Thanksgiving Day One. Tigers return to action right here in Little John against Alcorn State out of the SWAC coming up Friday night 8 p.m. and coach Rice talked a little bit about you know Boise State has done this several years now they came to the Charleston Classic a few years ago They'll go to Orlando for the ESPN Invitational. Loves to bring his team back east for those events. He says the weather's a lot better than it is right now in Boise. Folks here in the arena can say they saw a game with a team that traveled the farthest as Keene can't get it to go. Rebound Martin. Traveled the farthest of any regular season opponent. Going to go down from the outside for Abo. But his first points of the second half after 15 in the opening half of play. Boise State roughly 2,300 miles to come play this game. It's the farthest any 
regular season opponent has come to play Clemson on the men's side. I believe the Oregon women who came here during the great Sabrina Onescu's freshman year when she had her first ever triple double on this court. Pretty sure that's the furthest uh, regular season opponent to travel for uh, any game here in Little John Coliseum. And this is the future. Obviously the ACC expanding Stanford, Cal, um, you know, talking to Coach Brownell back in August, right after it happened, you know, we talked a little bit of scheduling, what's it going to be like, those types of things, and they really don't know yet. You know, they confirmed the three-pointer, by the way, for Abo, so give him 18. And Abo has had an outstanding day. You know, whenever you talk about guys, Boise State has had an outstanding group of guys that have been able to go on to play professionally, both in the NBA and overseas. Yeah. This will be a game that Abo will be able to go back and look at against a very good Clemson defensive team. You know, just because in an 18-point game we have time to discuss it, I would suppose the basketball model of scheduling, and of course with all the flurry of reports and talk that there's been about what the ACC actually looks like moving forward with the three new schools coming in, how many of the teams currently in the league may still be here. Hunter looking to add to his day, and the foul will be caught on Whiting. You've got to figure now that they schedule early season pre-January conference games, if indeed a Clemson with Cal, Stanford, and SMU also includes those currently in the league, got to think a lot of those games against Cal and Stanford, they'll try to schedule a Clemson to go out there during the December break when they're, they're not in class and play those two, and then that might be an opportunity to add another game on that trip just to get value out of the trip. Boy, Keen went for the slam. Hunter rejecting. Out of bounds for Boise State. No whistle. Clean block by Chase Hunter. And you can see, continue to see Chase Hunter's athleticism today. He had the big block in the first half. Now he's going to rotate over right here and block this dunk at the rim. Chase wow. Hunter has been very, very good today, showing his athleticism and his length at the rim. He dunked it in that basket in the first half. That time he rejects right in front of its rim. Whiting lobs to the wrong team. They cleaned up an early flurry of turnovers. They now match Clemson with 11. But the story of this game is from the Tigers' half-court defense in the second half. Another for Girard. Outstanding job by Joe Girard. The Tigers have really executed well in the second half. It's not just the turnovers, it's the possessions they've had. They've made Boise State guard late into the shot clock. P.J. Hall playing from the top of the key. Uh, Joe Girard moving without the basketball. That's been the biggest growth that we've seen from the Tigers today has been their ability to execute in the half court when they needed to. That timeout called to get guys like Girard and others off the floor. Joe Girard's day will end with 23 points scored on 9 of 17 from the field. 50% beyond the arc, hitting half of his six attempts there. Two of two at the line. Added four rebounds and three assists. Pretty good day against a very good team. Really good day, really good day. When you look at what P.J. Hall did in the first week and a half, those first three games, and now you back that up with what Joe Girard has done in the last two, uh, the Tigers will get a couple of days to prepare for Alcorn State on Friday, and then now the schedule really gets hard. You know, now it's Alabama, and, and the teams after, like that, they'll have to go to Pittsburgh for the first ACC game. The Tigers will enjoy this a little bit, and then uh, it's back to work. Tigers about to improve to 4-0. Backdoor pass executed beautifully, and the foul is called. So R.J. Keene will have a chance to go to the line, gets his first point to the game. The R.J. who's made the most impact in the contest, one R.J. Godfrey, a career high in blocks for the Tigers. With four in the contest, and his defense part of the story here in the second half. For Keene, guy who missed last year because of an injury, player they're going to count on for some valuable minutes and hoping he can add some scoring touch. The Woodlands native out of Houston, Texas, Boise State and Coach Leon Rice, the staff, has always done a very good job recruiting the state of Texas. Uh, they'll play North Texas here in a couple of weeks, but the Broncos do an outstanding job recruiting in Texas, and uh, R.J. Keene's going to be very good. Wiggins trying to work inside. Kobe Young knocked it away. Here's a lob for Keene, and Shefflin will be called for the foul.
So back to the free throw line goes Keen. Ian Shefflin picking up a third personal. Brad Brownell said in pregame he thought that with the eight fouls or so they could waste on trying to deny Hall and others in the inside Boise State would they have but trouble is they've not been able then to get work done on the other end. If you're going to commit fouls on one end you hope that it leads to just one point instead of two you've still got to be able to counter that it's of no use if, if obviously you're not effective on the offensive end of the floor 17 point game and the big story it goes back to one of our keys to the game Boise State had been outstanding in three-point field goal defense Clemson is able to make eight today that's kind of what created the separation and gave the Tigers space to operate today Wiggins gets his adding to his scoring day nine in the contest for the Tigers sophomore from just outside of Atlanta Great response today by Chauncey Wiggins. Comes off the bench for the first time this season. Adds nine points for the Tigers. Whiting on the crossover. Nice move. Jace Whiting. One of the few natives of Idaho they have on their squad. Two of them are the coach's son. He grew up in Boise. And he's from Burley, Idaho. Final 10 seconds. Tigers 4-0 and as they get ready for a visit from the Braves of Alcorn State on Friday at 8 p.m. Women's team gets ready to take on Longwood here at the bottom of the hour. Leon Rice, Brad Brownell shaking hands at midcourt. They've become